It's not every day we have the possibility to speak with the guy who's actually responsible for the development of uh, the Formula E electric car from DW. But Rudy Dietrich, you have that task, and that is a bit of a task, but I think you have done it quite well. Uh, you actually was very successful from the very start of BMW's involvement in Formula E. What is the secret behind that success? I know you can't give me all the details, but what is the process you have been through in order to be so, so successful? Well, there is no not one secret. It's it's a combination of multiple elements, and that actually started the, the assessment of those elements started quite a while ago. So we really had to understand the series because it's quite a bit different to a conventional racing series. And along the way, we we started to understand what the important parameters are, and for sure, powertrain efficiency is one of them. So together with our road car colleagues, I think they've done a, a, a astonishing job in developing this this electric motor. And then together with us, we did all the packaging and integration and uh, energy management is probably another aspect and then on top comes the drivers. Yes, because you have a very big interaction between the, the people who are actually developing uh, the cars for road, for road use. Yeah, that's true. So uh, actually we're in a fortunate situation that BMW is now developing the fifth generation of electric uh, powertrains for road cars and we've made use of that development facilities and also the, the brains of those people to really come up with a motor that is uh, just to our needs and is also allowed those guys to push the boundaries on uh, uh, electric motor design which will benefit the next generation of road cars. What is the big difference when it comes to conventional racing cars and uh, this electrical car? Well, it's just, uh, we call it sensitivity. So how, how do, does the car react to, say, 10 kilos of mass? How does the car react to 10 horsepower up and down? So all these sensitivities, they, they have a different ratio in Formula E than they have in other racing series. And also there's a difference between qualifying and race because in, in the race, on purpose, you're energy limited. That's why the approach, how you use the car in qualifying is quite a bit different uh, to the one in the race. And in the race, it's really about making use of that efficient powertrain and managing the energy throughout the entire race to eventually come up at the top. How do you react? Uh, we had a situation, for example, in the Mexico uh, Epri, uh, where um, suddenly the race was stopped and then they started up again. Doesn't it interfere with your, uh, let us say, uh, anticipations? Well, that's what we, what our tools and, and, and the, also the people at the, at the racetrack need to be need to be able to cope with. So all our our energy management software tools, as well as the strategies that the engineers on track have in mind, are able to cope with that. And and I think that's one of our strengths that you're very flexible and you can be very reactive in all of this change of boundary conditions to really get the rest the best out of the rest of your laps. When we come back to let us say the development of, car, of cars. Um, it is easy for me to understand that you can use the um, brains, you can use uh, the experience you have from uh, building road cars, which you have done for many years with uh, some sort of electric ingredients. But uh, how does it go the opposite way? How can uh, the road car producers actually benefit, benefit from the racing? Well, what they can do in this project is really push the limits in technology. As you can imagine, we're not producing so many pieces of that hardware, so we can also afford a slightly higher price per piece. That allows them to really push the limits in material science, in, in layout, in design, in tolerances. And from whatever we learn in these areas, is going to be taken over one-to-one -one in, in actual the, the next generation of roadcasts that are just about to be launched. That's in the eras of methodology like calculation but it's also in material science like 3d printing um, and all that stuff heat uh, dissipation all these areas have a one-to-one -one impact uh, between motor racing and road cars so having success in um, <laughs> formula e also means in some way you have success in uh, production car industry well, absolutely. I think our powertrains are already very good and the next generations are going to be even better. So it's a, it's a closed cycle of, of positive uh, engagement between the road car guys and, and the racing guys. And I think that's, that's what motor racing should also do. It should contribute to the road car development and it should be a mutual benefit.